Good morning, everyone. It's been quite some time since I've uh, posted. Um, as I had said, you know, in, in other videos, it was more or less, you know, told by my spirit guides to keep this to myself, to keep this information to myself. And <clears throat> I made a decision to you know, make this channel and, and try to help people out understanding. But um, this last month I kind of just uh, separated myself from everything and um, I really uh, kind of shut myself off to everything. So um, for a while there I was thinking to myself, you know, I turned it off completely um, just you know um, well for one the situation that I was in um, I mean, it was a high stress situation and I needed to use the ability to determine what was going to happen because it was you know it was it was essential so once that urgency um, was no longer there um, I guess the urgency for the ability was no longer there. So, like I said, I just just kind of been focusing on, um, you know, this this new uh, this new journey that I've begun, and um, this last week I've had some um, some extremely um, powerful events happen. And um, I spoke about, you know, this this uh, eclipse-looking um, vision that I had with, you know, the, what would be like a black circle over a white circle with the half crescent shape at the bottom um, being only, you know, just a very little bit. And um, ironically enough, I found that exact same symbol um, just a couple days ago. And here it is. I'm going to put it in the video. And, um, you know, it's like, no matter how hard I try to, well, basically, when I do my music, I, my music is like a, like a block. That, um, music is a tape that you play in your head over and over, and it's a program, it programs you. And when you have music in your head, um, you use your conscious mind um, to facilitate, you know, the thought, and that's working, you know, counterproductive to this, to this power and this ability that I speak of, so, and essentially music cancels out your ability, and, um, I've always used music since I can remember, music has always been, you know, a, an essential part of my life, you know, as from a young age, I learned to listen to music, you know, like, I, I relate time periods of my life to music, like, music is just everything, so, um, in my idle time, I'm usually humming or singing a song to myself, or in other words, programming myself, so the content of the music that I was listening to, um, basically reflects, or my life basically reflects the content of the music that I was listening to, and all those, you know, tapes that I had played over and over forms my life, and not only did it do that, but it also constantly kept me blocked from my ability, so, um, you know, my love for music caused me to basically not see my gift for all these years because of it's a distraction I'm plain and simple it's it's um it's it's just a distraction I mean everything has to be done moderately and you know I like I said I used to I sing songs I hum songs listen to songs in the car you listen to songs when you get home 
you know, if, if a lot of people are like me, music is a, is a big part of your life. And um, I don't want to, you know, stay too long on this, but it's just so important, you know, when I realize um, just, just the exact power that music has. So I started producing music and making my own music. And it, it's become like, um, you know, um, it's become this debilitating thing. I guess, and when I'm doing my music, it prevents me from, well, I access the ability, but on a different, on a different level, and um, it prevents me from, you know, um, letting my mind be clear and open, is, is ultimately what I'm saying, so I've been doing my music, cleaning everything up, um, you know, just getting all my stuff, you know, mixed and mastered and everything right, and uh, I've been doing that for the last month, you know, that I've been in the house, and because of that, I've been so focused and preoccupied with that, that I've basically ignored, you know, um, my intuition. So anyway... A couple days ago, I was, you know, just um, thinking about all these things and just, you know, going over them in my head and thinking, you know, there's like cigarettes. I want to quit smoking cigarettes. I take vitamins, you know, I, I, I'm trying to um, completely cleanse and get, you know, my body at optimal, you know, um, running because I, I, you know, I'm in the process of healing right now and um, I just as every day goes by, like, like, you know, for example, I take a hit of a cigarette, every one, it's just painful, I can just feel, you know, the, the toxic, and, um, food, you know, I just can't eat anything but, like, healthy food, like, I'm addicted to vegetables, and, um, fish, and, you know, just, things that are good, when I eat a cheeseburger, I'm, every, I, like, I'm thinking about every bite, like, oh my god, it's so terrible, like, and I used to love cheeseburgers, like, I mean, love cheeseburgers, like, you know, real cheeseburgers, with a hamburger, you know, and you make them, but, I can't eat, like, fast food, anything, anything that's, that's not, um, anything that doesn't vibrate well with me, I just, you know, I don't have no need for it, and, um, so anyway, like I said, this stuff has been, has been, um, just blocking me, so I started thinking about all these things, and it started basically breaking through, so the other day, I'm sitting here, and, um, I had this, this vision, now, my visions are what you would most likely, um, consider a daydream, but I, they're not daydreams though they're I, it's it's accessing like when i when i you know the in my book you know i go over exactly the the details of of the process but it's more or less shutting your conscious mind off because when you shut off your conscious mind you um basically start letting through your subconscious mind and your subconscious mind is what controls all your vital functions controls everything that's your connection to you know, um, spirit, so, when I daydream, the process I daydream with is by shutting off my thoughts, or you can call it meditating, or, you know, whatever you want to call it, I shut off my conscious thoughts, and this movie starts playing in the back of my mind, and it's like a dream, but it's not, because I'm conscious and I'm aware, um, and I'm able to achieve that state anytime. I mean, it's basically like a like putting myself to sleep, but but I'm still awake and conscious. So um, anyway, so when I shut my thoughts off and my conscious will and my desires and you know all this negative shit that clouds our minds all day, when I shut that off, I start seeing these 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 you know movies play out. And these images play out um, are always significant. They're not, you know, just fantasizing. It's not me. 
I, I just want to, you know, clarify. These aren't daydreaming because I'm not dreaming about things. I'm not thinking about things. I'm not wanting things. I'm not projecting my intention onto things. I am receiving things. I am blanking my mind out and the things come to me. So that's the difference. The difference is these aren't things that are that are projected. These are things that are received. So it's very important to remember that because if it's something you're projecting, then it's not of the source and it should be disregarded. The only way the only level it should be looked at on is on a personal level of what your you know inner 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 you know machinations are anything that comes from you you need to look at honestly of what that means to you and, and what the lesson is in it but it doesn't have any um, application as far as what comes from your subconscious with the whole intuition and um, you know the the the, the esoteric um, you know meaning so anyway I I have this vision of I I was above my I was above myself actually it wasn't even a vision it was just this feeling and I, I like I just had these impressions and I was just I was above I was above everything and I seen myself and I seen myself connected to my dreams and I seen that they were the same that they were both opposite ends but they were the same and I seen my life and I seen who I was and I seen what everything I've done and I just seen everything from above and I looked at myself and I had tears coming down my eyes and I you know I said to myself I just want the best for my kids and um, you know I've had a lot of shit happen you know over the years and just you know relationships with uh, certain people that have just been you know toxic and you know a lot of selfish but I'm not even going to get into it. The point is, is my kid and, you know, has suffered. And regardless of, you know, the parties that are involved, it, you know, it, spite and not on my end, um, spite continues to, to dictate, you know, my, my child's life. <clears throat> and it's just not right. So anyway, the damage has been done and you know it's it's obviously um something that i don't feel good about or or um you know obviously wish that you know the outcome could have been different but if you hold on to that baggage then that just continues to compound and you know um it doesn't it doesn't solve anything other than to weigh on your conscience and dictate, you know, and, and elicit more thoughts of that nature or that line. So anyway, in this vision, I just, um, I seen, you know, like I said, I see myself, I see myself connected to my dreams and how they were one. That was the theme of it, that they were one. And then I seen my life and I seen my purpose in life. Or I seen, um, I don't know, like I said, I said, I said to myself in this thing, you know, I just, I just want to, something about, you know, I just, I just want to, I just want to do some, just some, something related to, to my kids. And, um, then I had this overwhelming feeling of, um, somebody telling me it's going to be all right. And we're all here. And like I just it was like like if 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 you um like if you ever seen like in like the movies how they have like a scene with like the sun dancing and like you know it's like cartoonish and it's meant to be like you know happy land like I had that impression and um this voice that was the voice that speaks to me but it was everyone it was everyone that's dead you know everyone that was died you know it was everyone it was my my spirit guides it was it was us it was me it was you it was it was all of us and it it basically said to me you know um it's okay we're all here you know you never die and you know you're gonna be all right 
and there's no need to worry for your kids and there's no need to worry about all this stuff that you're worrying about because it doesn't matter it's all perspective it's all okay nothing is you know imperfect outside of god and um you know it's just this most profound f experience because like i said i haven't had too many experiences in the past couple weeks because i've just shut myself off to it i mean it's just this is a lot of stuff for uh, you know somebody to um to basically figure out and discover and and uh implement and you know try to basically um to um you know um, assimilate into you know my life it's it's a lot so anyway um as i reanalyzed it I, I started looking at this this dream and i think about some of these dreams that i have and i realize that my dreams are kind of like a, a demo to show me what it is you know when we're outside of form like when we're in consciousness so when I have dreams that are like what would be considered nightmares not nightmares but just bad things happening that, that aren't relative to um, prediction or anything that's going to happen when they're not messages when they're not the things that I talk about there are other things because I have all types of dreams and some are relevant and some are not but I always know the difference because the ones that are of me are of are have fear in them and the ones that are not of me don't and um i just seen that how we're connected when it showed me like i seen myself like i seen the way i seen it was in my consciousness though i seen through both sides like i was above myself looking at both okay both of my different sides the dream side and the conscious side or the subconscious and the conscious and um, I just felt them both connected and that they were the same thing and there's nothing different between that the sleeping and the waking other than the fact that this is basically a collective out or conscious is a collective outside or in the real world or outside of you know ourselves so we exist our dream is inside our consciousness is outside so outside of ourselves this is collective we create this together but inside of ourselves we are one so we create that based upon um, you know our own personal free will and our own entity um, our own, you know, grain of sand, our own drop of water, you know, our, our uniqueness. And I seen that we create those worlds, those dream worlds through these fears. And, um, that sometimes we're, I noticed that sometimes when we're in them, they're so convincing that we believe we're in it. And we play this whole scenario out that, you know, is, is, is something that hurts or something that you know like just all different types of scenarios that you could think about in dreams that aren't good you play these scenarios out and you wake up and you got a crazy feeling like oh my god like because you you really feel like you experienced it and you wake up feeling a sense of loss or something you know and um you know that's real that's that's it's 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 a demo it's showing us you know how, how we create when we're not attached to this body and we're to learn from those experiences to learn to 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 basically transmute that fear that we have that is creating those dreams and you know basically overcome that so we could be in a power of of, of love or um you know i've talked about you know the difference between what everybody thinks is love and what love is and you know unconditional love is you know where where we need to be at which is no having faith faith unconditional love is faith so anyway i see myself above above myself and um i realize that there's no difference in that 
what that represented is is this this merging that I keep talking of this zero point when two become one and um, I'm gonna start you know reading the emerald tablets because they're so important and if there's one thing I took from there it is this when two become one because you know when spoke again to me the nine saying seek and ye shall find no the barriers be, be, been lifted we've made free from the fog when two become one no the barriers been lifted we've made free from the fog and it's like it couldn't be more more accurate because when two become one is when the the polarities become one or when the dream world and the conscious or in the living world waking world become one and you know all these things so I had this vision of um, the eclipse you know with that little crescent at the bottom which was signifying you know the almost almost a full eclipse it was right at the point and as you know an eclipse is when two patterns or two um, things you know basically overlap each other and that's essentially what's taking place here when this reversal happens is is we're going to be overlapping crossing fields and reversing polarities reversing you know um, from you know conscious to subconscious from from you know from you know positive to anti like it's all um, it's all relevant because it's all the same it's all one it's just two ends of the spectrum two opposite ends of the spectrum the duality and the duality only exists in this third dimension when we access the fifth dimensions and you know the higher dimensions we exist as pure energy pure light pure love pure you know um, uh, creation and um, the space that that we basically place ourselves in while we're here is between two two places and it's linear so by doing that you're basically subjecting yourself to cause and effect and for every action and for everything that's done um, you know you're, you're you're basically subjecting yourself to karma cause and effect karma and you know a lot of the times it takes forever for karma to clear and you just keep basically you know pinballing or whatever this this karma all the way down the line well as I said we're getting to this place where where all those all those um frequencies that are bouncing around are about to cancel out and be washed and cleaned and uh, re-emerge and with an opposite charge and this two become one is like I said this this merging so as I'm watching a video um, the other day I haven't watched very many videos or nothing I watch a video the other day and I see this symbol that I seen the other day that the one I, well, I, I would have posted in the video I see that symbol and it just sparked you know all this stuff in me instantly I was like wow there it is because I can't get away from this stuff if I try to suppress it for too long it'll start surfacing you know when I blink I'll see something or you know when I when I anything it just comes out like there's no there's no it's not like you know um, you can't hide from the truth like it just is what it is so anyway the point of what I'm saying is is we are coming to this place um, of transition you know very very rapidly and I um, I really haven't you know it's I, I'm really kind of just sitting back and waiting because um, you know it's it's just there's so many things that happen on such a small level and you know the things that like I 
like just ev all the time like I, I couldn't make videos about all the stuff that happens because you know it's so insignificant and inconsequential and so stupid that most people would just be bored and be like you know that's, that's just but they're they're little things to me that reinforce because it's just like there's a synchronicity or a or a pattern in everything. I mean everything is like a is like a is like a tapestry that's been woven together. So everything that comes to me, everything that happens to me, everything all day, everywhere I'm at, everything I do, everything that happens, everything that's said, everything, everything is just um synchronized with with you know, with like the the events that take place, you know, in a, in a linear path are synchronized chronologically, I guess. I don't know how else to really explain it. And not only do they synchronize, you know, one way, but they synchronize for multiple things. So, like, everything just locks in together. And, um... Like I said, as that happens, you know, it just solidifies your faith and it becomes that much stronger. So to me, like, it's to, it's getting to the point where I don't care to, to try to tell people anymore because people, you know, are ignorant and they, you know, they laugh and they try to make fun of you and they think they're going to, like, hurt your feelings or something. Like, like, you know, they say ignorant things and, like, like for one, anybody that thinks I give two shits what their opinion of me is is you know needs to do some self some searching of their own because, like, I don't care what people think about me and that is the god's honest truth. I don't care, and nothing you say to me is gonna hurt my feelings because I know who I am and I know what I see and I know what's been taking place with me. And I honestly feel bad for you that you haven't reached there yet because it can't be explain to you and it's not something that you can logically learn or use your you know intellectual you know you can't intellectualize this because it's the opposite of what you need to you to get this so you know people think you're crazy people think you're you know put your tinfoil hat on you know whatever that's that's cool man <laughs> like you're not ready yet and i feel bad for you and you could say what you want and think what you want but you know you're just ignorant and you have a long way to go and you know the sad truth is everybody isn't going to make it this isn't everybody gets a trophy eventually you will get your trophy but you know there are going to be very many that are left behind and what i mean by left behind is you know the souls that refuse to evolve basically um gather in mass and become um black holes basically antimatter because you are going the opposite direction of of evolution and you know that translates basically to positive and negative so if you're not you know of the positive you're of the anti so you know it's neither good nor bad it just is and you know those people need to exist for the others to exist so i don't feel you know any type of way about it i have been learning to walk the middle road because the middle road is the true path to enlightenment um it is better to you know be in the null zone than and and and, and to be able to dictate you know which which way you you know swing the pendulum or whatever you know it, it's better to be in a point of a, a centered position or a position of power to be able to um, move from than be you know blinded to the opposite side because you're you know sub submerged in into whatever specific polarity and um, you know once you once you realize that you know if you looked at it in a linear path say you have point a and point b and between point a and point b there's you know a neutral there's there's a, a um, there's a horizon there's um a prime meridian so at your prime meridian you're going to have basically represented by zero and we'll have you know tens positive ten negative ten so if you're at the zero zero doesn't just go to positive 10 and negative 10 
zero is also a gateway or a portal into you know um, east 10 and west 10 and um, you know northeast and you know all, if you understand what I'm saying uh, it's it's a position in which everything emanates from all possibility and if you realize that that everything that is around us everything that we're made of you know photons you know quirks all these different energies and particles and, and you know matter and antimatter everything that they talk about um, well, quantum physics has proven that um, matter only exists through what we perceive it to be it doesn't exist in a solid state and it damn sure doesn't exist as something tangible it's something that is etheric it is something that that cannot be defined because it exists as probabilities it exists as variables it exists as nothing and that's what's so hard for people to wrap their mind around because you have this you know this mass of nothing that has no weight no value no nothing no measurable anything until intention is placed on it and when intention is placed on it it becomes whatever that intention is and instantaneously so understanding that and understanding that time doesn't exist only through our perception you understand that that from that point of zero zero point or the starting point or the essence from that point all things are possible because you are now at ground zero you are now at you know you're now at the the origin um, you know you're you're now at the cause rather than the effect and once you start living in you know the cause or the now the now moment once you start living in the now moment or the prime meridian you start living you, you become empowered and you start you know um, embracing your creator potential and in 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 order to even be given these lessons you you must be pure of heart and soul your intentions have to your heart has to you know be lighter than a feather because you know this information isn't just given to people um, this is the information that your soul tells you upon initiation into the mysteries um, you know I years back I seen a hand and if any of you have ever read the lost symbol by um, Dan Brown it's my favorite book out of the uh, the Da Vinci Code series but um I read Digital Fortress and um, or maybe that was I don't think that was Dan Brown that was he had one book that wasn't a part of the Da Vinci Code series but, but regardless um, in the in the lost symbol in the beginning it starts off with this hand in the middle of um, the museum and um, he looks into this hand and it's initiation in the school of mysteries and the ancient school of um, you know basically the the founding father of secret societies and the ones that were you know to keep the information the the sacred knowledge and a couple years back I, I seen that hand and it came to me in a vision followed by a whole bunch of other things and you know I just had so many just crazy visions but but that was one of my lessons and uh, as I said Thoth plays a major role in my he's one of my spirit guides just that's that's just what it is I mean I have this Native American man as I said I have Thoth which comes to me in the form of a baboon or um, himself and um, Jesus or Christ and that's it I mean those are my three um, I have talked about that on other occasions but you know Christ Thoth and um, I also had this uh, these two Chinese looking people that came to me in the ship 
but that was, you know, we spoke through telepathy. That wasn't a physical experience, that was an experience in consciousness, which is how most of these um, alien races communicate. Um, and they're not alien, you know, truth be told, we're the aliens. But, um, regardless, so moving from this position of zero point, um, is the position that we need to basically attain moving forward because as I keep talking about with you know the earth's rotation once we hit this point once we hit the event you know I've heard it talked about once we hit this point once we hit the transition point if you are not centered or if you're not balanced or if there's no status quo or if you're not in the prime meridian or you know pi or whatever the hell you want to call it if you're not in that point then you are going to be basically in the wind um, once the energies and the frequencies start changing your the 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 reality that we collectively hold together is going to be changed and we're going to be basically reset and when the you know when like I said, when the ionosphere, without the magnetic, you know, without, the Earth basically is like, you know, the magnetic field around the Earth is what keeps our memories intact. So, without the magnetic field, you have no memory. So, you're instantaneously forgetting things as you're seeing them. And, um, the only way to basically um, have any semblance of 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 life and 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 moving forward is by learning how to use your 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 backup system or your main system really, and that can only be accessed by disabling um, you know the 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 system that that runs you know or that blocks that and you know your interface is your conscious mind with this reality your conscious mind translates everything from your subconscious mind into this that's your processor that's your you know um that's basically your your interface you know it's 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 what what translates you know when you see a picture in your mind of something that's that's from your intuition your brain will associate it with a known pattern that you recognize and it doesn't even it's not even usually right it's just you're not you know your mind tries to associate patterns and tries to distinguish things and put a name to things to give it some type of you know um, definitive name and you know that's a flaw that we have but it is what it is so um, back to you know what I'm saying so with this vision um, I was basically just shown to kick back and hang out because everything is gonna be okay <laughs> and um, you know as, as crazy as that sounds as crazy as that sounds um, I believe it and you know my like as I've said in you know many other videos, my only worries moving forward are for you know my you know, my children. I mean that's it, and um, you know all that was addressed in this vision. It just you know it it was it was just a I stepped outside of myself and seen myself for basically the pitiful human that I am and um it's a humbling experience I mean to say in the least and I say that you know with no judgment upon myself I say that just in truth and every one of us are a pitiful human every one of us live in sin every one of us have character defects and flaws every one of us have things that we wish we could change about ourselves have things that we regret have things that we care about 
have you know things that we worry about all day long we have foolish desires we have foolish thoughts we have you know we're just a mess we're pitiful so in this pitiful pathetic existence that we live the only way to strengthen yourself is to build that bond inside that alleviates the need for you to depend on anything anyone any feeling any anything and that's the void or the hole that we constantly try to fill with other things with things of you know with addiction with you know and relationships you know all different types of things and it's really becoming painfully you know apparent and I'm painfully aware of of all these things and they weigh on my mind you know I it's like the 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 path of of um, you know basically the death of ego is by following the signs without judgment and without um, basically not listening like when you're shown you know what to do well that don't argue with it just do it and you follow that path over and over like like for example when I first started doing this you know I had songs that had things that you know I, I wouldn't want my kids to hear so I was told to take them down and there was a lot of work in them but I took them down I just listened I obeyed I did it I took them down I deleted them and um, you know I ended up putting them back up and um, you know that that was when I was following this path of death of ego and to, to do that is to, to to follow through and to not question it and to go back to it it's taking the songs down and moving to the next thing you know quitting smoking cigarettes doing it and moving to the next thing you know and it's following your your inner voice and listening to your heart in every situation without allowing your own conscious mind to dictate what it desires or wants or those demons and um that's basically you know with this with the with the dream thing that i seen um as i seen myself one with my dreams i realized that the things that i have dreams about that are my fears um I create and I'm shown those dreams to show me you know what my fears are and that they're 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 baseless and that's what I need to work on that's what I need to get over that's what I need to accept that's what I need to move past so if your dreams are telling you something if you have a dream that doesn't sit well and that or any type of dream that all your every one of your dreams means something they're a part of you your dreams are you you're living another life in your dreams and we're coming to the point where those lives are going to connect if you've ever been you know met people in your dreams that you've never met before in real life or been in situations that were just so real and you know they are and um you know it's just it's just amazing but regardless the energy has been just you know changing so rapidly that I've been trying to quit defining it because by defining it I'm only limiting myself and there's no way to you know really explain and give it justice to you guys you know what exactly I mean you know, what I what I'm talking about and um, you know I just pray that people understand that through judgment and selfishness you will not you know you will not be here for the next round and by basically you know not accepting um, the evidence that's in front of everyone and moving out of 
your desire and your ego based lifestyle um, you're just you know basically conditioning yourself to stay in in this and You know, I still hold to what I've been saying this whole time. This year, I believe, is is the year. And I just seen an interesting video. Oh, I was looking through some videos, and I seen one that made me, you know, remember a couple videos I seen some years ago. So I ended up going looking, you know, back up Alex Collier. And I'm probably going to post the video. Um, because he's got some interesting things to say, some things I don't agree with. But he was talking about in one of his lectures um, the th the th third dimensional plane imploding in 2013 um, around the beginning of December, and this was back in like 1994 or something. And when I heard that, I thought to myself, "That's so amazing!" Because you know, I literally got my my this gift, uh, you know, was realized that exact period of time from you know the second week of November to the first week of December was when this all started for me and last week or two weeks ago or whenever it was I released that video a different perspective I was talking about what if all this stuff already happened and you know we are in a parallel reality that you know the Mandela effect and all that is basically just a, a, a loop in the hologram and um you know all these things that I didn't have um, answers on started coming to me you know that's how it always works if I don't know about something I just hold it and it comes so um, you know I was basically shown you know all these different this, this, these different things but as I watched I seen that and then there was um There was something else that he was showing me, or that he was showing in the video, but it showed me, I, I seen this, um, there was this wave coming up out of Antarctica, um, within the last week, some strange beam or something, I'm gonna post some pictures uh, of it, but it was, um, you know, it was some type of, um, energy that was coming from Antarctica, and it looked the exact the way that he was rep he was talking about something and he drew the lines and he did it and he was talking about energy and you know coming from somewhere and all this stuff but um it was all the exact same and um like i said this was years ago and it was just these different coincidences and these different synchronicities that i seen but there were things that were specific to questions that i had and it was as if they were shown to me to answer my questions you know the synchronicities that i always talk about so, you know, I just, I've had, I had a lot of things confirmed, but, um, I'm going to post some, some videos, um, I just woke up, basically, you know, went to get a, get a drink, and, you know, um, I wanted to record this before I forgot it, and why I still had the motivation to do it, because, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm losing the passion for trying to explain to people, because people, you know, uh, you know my viewers are great you know the people on my channel a lot of you are great and um, you know I, I enjoy um, you know helping people as much as I can but you know a lot of people are just you know ignorant and it, it just it's it, it used to be so frustrating to try to you know to help people out and to make people see you know what they so ignorantly can't or and, and, and you know it's just it, it's frustrating or it was frustrating and then you know I just decided like you know let it go it doesn't matter and like I was showed my vision you know like they're all we're all here it's all good you know you have nothing to worry about you know just 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 you know make just just follow your inner voice and listen to what you're being told stop trying to dictate start taking direction and that's you know this that's the biggest lesson is this humility and uh, you know that was my grandfather's dying words he was a well accomplished man um, you know I maybe ambassador to Indonesia you know owned you know multiple companies um, had a PhD uh, 
excuse me, just multiple, you know, different stuff. And uh, his dying words were, um, humility goes a long way. He said, you know, just remember, humility goes a long way in life. And, um, you know, that he couldn't have been, and he was a loud, boisterous, you know, some people would say blowhard, you know, he was just confident, and he had, you know, he was a boss, and, um, he just, uh, he was a big guy, you know, and, and he was just, he just, that's how he was, but, um, you know, for him, he wasn't humble, is what I'm saying, and for him to tell me that, you know, um, that meant something, so I say the same thing to you, and, you know, that's a man that had, you know, a lifetime of experience of, you know, owning, having it all, doing it all, being everywhere, every, you know, country, every everything. And uh, that was his dying message. His last words were, you know, humility goes a long way in life. And, you know, humility is the act of being humble. And being humble is taking direction. It is without pride. It is without ego. And that is the hardest lesson that any of us can learn because through, through humility, we must give up what we, the story that we've, we've created for ourselves and who we are because we like to believe ourselves these, you know, men think they're these tough guys and women think they're, you know, they're emotionally fit and, you know, they can't be, you know, they can't be manipulated and, you know, just all these different dynamics, you know, psychologically, um, all these things that keep us living, you know, in this duality, all these things that keep us, you know, polarized. Um, can be resolved with humility. So, and humility is, is, you know, for example, when me and my wife are arguing, you know, whether I'm right or wrong, humility is just accepting it and letting it go and not needing to, to, to be right or to get the last word. Um, humility is, you know, um, you know, I did this interview with, you know, Mr. Reyna, and he, you know, I, I, I took the second part out, because, you know, I, I, I wasn't, I, I felt like I was, um, just, I used him as an example, I felt like, and I didn't want to do that, because, you know, I felt like that was, um, just not right, and he had said, you know, it was a very good, there was a lot of good stuff said, you know, I, I really wanted to post it, but I just, I should have been more humble, but, um, he said that, you know, he was at, he gave me this story, he said one time he was at work, and, um, this lady, this lady, um, patented something, or something like that, and, um, you know, took credit for it, and it was his work, and he didn't get any credit, and he was so furious that, you know, that that had happened and that he wasn't recognized for his work. And I said, you know, that is your lesson. That is your lesson in this lifetime. And I said, the reason I recognize that is because I recognize it in myself. And, you know, I'm the same exact way. Like, when I can remember when I used to be in school, you know, if, you know, a teacher asks you to raise your hand and answer questions... Like, I'd have to, like, you know, speak out of turn just just to prove that I knew it. Or, like, you know, just, just those little validating things. And that is all a psychological issue that we have with ourselves. Feeling less than, or insecurities, and, you know, all these different things and issues and, and reasons that we feel this way. Um... You know, it's, it's, it's like doing, that's, the, you know, how are you going to do the right thing when nobody's watching if you constantly want, you know, recognition for the doing the right thing? You know, that is, that's criminal thinking. And if you are only doing things to gain recognition or, you know, stature, or, you know, whatever, the, uh, for some ulterior motive, 
If you're only doing things for those reasons, then that means, you know, when you're faced with a hard decision and no one's watching, you're going to cut corners. Because if you're not getting recognition or you're not receiving something out of it, then you don't want to deal with it. You're going to do the easiest thing you can. So, to me, you know, that was one of the main, oh, that was another main lesson I got a couple weeks ago was complacency and being lazy don't be lazy you know this is not the easy this the, this is not easy at all this is the opposite of easy you know the easy road is the criminal life the easy road is the you know always cutting corners looking for an easier you know method looking for an easier route looking for a way out you know the criminal route the criminal thinking starts with cutting corners you know, once you are cutting corners, you are now thinking like a criminal. You're, you're predisposed to, you know, start acting like a criminal because of that. Because, you know, as we know, the things that we process through our minds become reality. So, you know, doing away with with that and, and, and understanding that, you know, it's like try to have some precognizant... Um, um, basically, um, wiring that, that automatically, like, through application and through faith and practice and through hard work, works, it talks about in the Bible, through work, you can reprogram your mind to start running on auto autopilot. And rather than your mind automatically going to, you know, to cutting corners, your mind will already, like what I was just saying, your mind will already be, you know, um, working, you know, through, it'll, it'll already be precognizant. It'll already, it'll already, um, you know, be moving in the direction that it should be. So, you know, um, as we, as we use specific pathways in our mind, our, our, our nerves and our, our neurons and, you know, um, we create these different pathways and make associations um, through the way that they fire and through the way that we use them. So if you run a specific, you know, set of thoughts through your mind on a daily basis, then those, 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 um, those wires, you know, are for a, in a specific pattern. But if you change the way that you operate and you change the way that your thought patterns are, you rewire those those thinking patterns and create new ones. And your old ones will still be there. So, you know, picture, you know, um, picture, uh, you know, you know, a synopsis. When a synopsis haps, happens, it's you know basically like a, a spark and a light or a lightning bolt and imagine that spark traveling down a line okay now imagine if that line it's had no resistance that line is just one way so boom that spark's been going down that line now imagine if that if that line forks off now and has you know has a y so when that spark comes down to the y provided that it's symmetrical that spark has a 50 50 chance of going to the left or to the right it's the same thing with our thoughts when we start doing hard work and we start applying these things not being lazy and not trying to cut corners we basically start creating these new these new thought patterns but the old ones are still there so you know you have a 50 50 chance for you know these your thought to go there you know um by habit and only by maintaining you know what it is that you know you should be doing with consistency over extended period of time can you rewire yourself and those nerves that you were using previously will stop regenerating and will stop um, being conduits that are used so you know I try, I'm, I'm trying to explain this the best I can as I as I see it in my in my mind regardless we are close and all that really matters is that as I said you just you know 
do not judge and do not you know um um do not um i guess depend on your conscious on your conscious mind for everything start trying to shut your thoughts off start trying to live in the now if you can live in the now moment without judgment you are you know you, you've got a leg up in the game so you know for 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 this week and for the rest of your lives but for this week try to analyze the things that you think and the reasons that you're thinking them and if those thoughts are coming from you or if those thoughts are being received and take a look at your dreams as well and keep you know keep a journal keep a log keep a dream log keep a journal you know look at your dreams and see what your dreams are for the next week are they based out of fear or are they based out of something else and if they're based out of fear what is it and what can you do to you know resolve that because we're all being shown all these things and these are the things that are holding us back and we're given so many signs and so many opportunities but people just don't get it so I'm going to end this with that um, I have I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be posting some more videos I have a lot more things I want to talk about I just wanted to get this up like I said because it was such a significant you know message but um, stay vigilant and stay tuned <laughs>